And welcome to Hannity. All right, we begin with news just breaking right now at this minute, and we, we start with a Fox News alert. Now, according to a breaking new report from Politico, the U.S. Supreme Court has, in fact, voted to overturn Roe versus Wade. If this report turns out to be true, abortion will now be regulated at the state level, uh, meaning it is not going to be illegal probably in most states in the United States. Getting rid of Roe v. Wade sound good to me, but there's more to it. So we need to talk about it. This video is brought to you by the Officer Tatum Store. The Officer Tatum Store. Get the merch link in the description section. Y'all already know what to do. So let's get into this. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, this is a crazy uh, situation and development that's happening. I'm going to say some facts right off the bat so you don't, you're not confusing. You're walking around here spreading disinformation. This is not official. The Supreme Court justice having officially struck down uh, uh, Roe v. Wade and, and, and abolished Roe v. Wade on the federal level, uh, giving the decision making back to the states. It's not official. Now, this was leaked. Now, I would argue it was probably leaked by a Democrat in the Supreme Court in their office so that they can have enough outrage to to, I think, intimidate the Supreme Court justices in order for them to make a decision favorable to Roe v. Wade. That's pretty much what it is. And also give a, a, a leverage point to politicians on the left side, on the Democrat side, for people to come out and vote because of fear of not allowing women to have abortions is what the degeneracy that we see in our country has has gotten to. But I want to talk a little bit about Roe v. Wade to give you some history so you're not uninformed about what's going on with Roe v. Wade. How do we get to this point and what does it actually mean if the Supreme Court justice uh, justices decide that they are going to strike down Roe v. Wade as a, as a federal protection and leave it up to the states. Now, let's go back to the very beginning. And, and, and Roe v. Wade, in, in its inception, was very manipulative, right? So you have a, a, a young woman um, named uh, Norma uh, McCorvey. That's her name. It came back to me. Norma McCorvey. Now, she's a woman uh, that, was, that was on her third child. And she was approached by these activist lawyers, in my opinion. I don't know them. I wasn't alive then. But uh, these activist lawyers had approached her. She wasn't a person in favor of abortions. And they pretty much tricked her into agreeing to be a part of their claim, their case, to, to uh, try to allow women to have abortions without repercussions. Now, they had other cases that they were involved in, but they needed more, uh, they needed more leverage. And so they used this young woman, Norma uh, McCorvey, to be a part of it. She originally didn't think that abortion was, was legal or illegal. She was in, in, in impartial. But they convinced her that it was something that should be legalized, the legal protection of women trying to have an abortion. And so what? She goes along with it. Now, one thing that people don't know is that Norma McCorvey and, and her legal pseudonym is what they call it, so that the, her name is not on the case, is Jane Roe. That's where you get Roe v. Wade. And then Henry Wade was the uh, district attorney that was, you know, obviously the case was against. That's where you get the two sides of the word, the Roe versus Wade, Planned Parenthood versus Casey. Uh, this is the way the court documents uh, work, and this is how they associate the people together. So regardless of that, uh, Miss Roe, uh, Norma McCorvey, ended up having a child and giving her child up for adoption in the state of Texas. After that, uh, these these activist attorneys had some options to bolster their case and they took it to the Supreme Court. They actually took it to the district court in Texas and then they appealed it to the Supreme Court. Now, uh, they believed that they had favorable options uh, uh, in the court system and they used that and leveraged that to their benefit. And this is why people are saying that Roe v. Wade was, was political activism. It, it had nothing to do with ruling based on the Constitution of the United States of America. So once they found it favorable and they had favorable judges to rule on, on their behalf, the judges ruled based on the 14th Amendment. Right. The, the, the due process uh, portion of the 14th Amendment, the, the right to privacy of citizens. Um, and that the government shall not infringe on, on certain privacies. And so they use that to say it, it is a woman's right to have the privacy to have whatever she want to have and do whatever she want to do with her body. Now, it was never absolute. Uh, plan, uh, I say Planned Parenthood. Roe v. Wade was never absolute, meaning that there were some restrictions that can be imposed by the states, meaning that they started out uh, focusing on trimesters, first, second, third trimester. 
right? First trimester was completely um, off limits for any government intervention and involvement and knowledge. Uh, women can have abortions as many as they can through, uh, through the first and, and potentially part of the second uh, trimester. And then, you know, with Planned Parenthood and Casey, I think things begin to change and it went more towards viability, meaning can the baby exist outside of the womb and stuff like that. Now, we all know viability is sub subjective because um, kids can't live outside the womb after you've given birth to them. I mean, they still need you to feed them and nurture them and take care of them. You know, it's it, the viability argument is, is absolutely ridiculous. But what we're coming up against now is that we have conservatives on the Supreme Court who are saying this has nothing to do with the Constitution of the United States of America. This should have never been a constitutional uh, uh, protection. It's not that women can't have abortion. This is not the ruling of the court that women should have abortions or not. Or is it is it right or wrong? The argument in the Supreme Court is that is this actually a constitutional argument or is this not in line with the Constitution of the United States of America? Now, I believe and many people on the conservative side believe because I think most conservatives are logic and liberals are acting with emotion, in my opinion, um, that it's not constitutional protection. This You're going from saying a woman should be able to do whatever she want to do with her body, but it's not just her body. You have another living being inside of women and we have now seen and, and you have to be disingenuous to disagree with me on this one we have seen that many women are using this as birth control meaning i can go out and be as promiscuous as i want i can make as many poor decisions as i want in my life and because i know if the rubber hits the road i can go down to planned parenthood and, and and there's a lot of psychological effects with that and anybody can do research look it up a lot of women who go down that path they they have a lot of regret you know, they sell you a dream that it's only a clump of cells, that it's only tissue, that it doesn't matter. Like, you're going to be fine. And and a lot of women are going and doing this, and they're not okay, uh, especially women. And I would imagine, I don't have a statistical data, but I have common sense, and I have I feel like God has given me a level of discernment um, that is you know aligned with some of the things that you can go look up. I would argue that women who get into the situation and then they later have children, they realize that they actually took the life of one of their children. And and, and a lot of women don't recover. Now I support uh, many uh, pro-life organizations, at least two major pro-life organizations in the state of Arizona, where we, we've given tens of thousands of dollars to. Um, but, you know, they share these stories. I've been to and listening to testimonies and at banquets where these women are coming up and saying, look, I had one and I regret it for life. And I almost had one. And I'm thank God that I didn't. But I, I was coerced. I was manipulated. I was uh, ill informed when making that decision. And so I think it's invaluable for us as a society to be fair and balanced about this. Like you have birth control. You have all of these other measures. You have abstinence. All these other measures. And I don't want to care if somebody said, well, it's a different time in the world. Well, you got to make a decision about your own life. Do you want to have children out of wedlock or do you not? And if you if you don't, then there's a 100 percent chance that you won't have a child if you are not involved in, in sexual activity. But I think as a society, we should have a, a balanced argument on this. This is not an argument of, oh, we want to disenfranchise women. To be honest, in many of these states, abortion is going to have the same. It's going to be the same. Some states can say you can have abortions all the way up to, uh, you know, the third trimester, the federal government is not going to intervene and protect you on that. You're going to be subject to federal law and you're going to be subject to state law. Um, but, you know, people in Texas or people in these places where abortions are not, they're just going to drive to another state. Um, to be honest, that's what's going to happen. And many of these states, even conservative states, are not as punitive on abortions. Like they let you still have one after the heartbeat. They, I think it's 16 weeks or something like that. They, they, they let women have abortions way later than what, what I think is reasonable. And we're not talking about people who are raped or molested or whatever the case may be. That's not, and I still believe it, even if that happened to you, you shouldn't have an abortion. You should give your kid up for adoption or you should take care of your kid. Like my grandmother did at 12 when she was raped and had my mom. You take care of your kids. You know, you can forgive the person who did that to you. I know it's not easy. Maybe you need to go to counseling. But you, you, but you have to move on. You can't you can't punish the kid for, for, the, for the issues of their father. And so... Even then, that's still less than 1% of all these abortions that are occurring are related to people who are raped or whatever the case may be. So let's have a real argument. This is not, this was this was a woman, I believe, who, were, who was coerced into being a part of a case to bolster activism, which we have yielded for almost a century, well, not almost a century, uh, several decades from, from the 70s, 
we have held this rule that have been outside of the, the, the realm of the Constitution of the United States of America. And politically, and I'm going to shut my mouth, politically, we need to really evaluate who are you voting for. If you are a Christian in the United States of America, there is no way you should be voting for politicians that support abortions. There's so many more options. And, and, and I'll, I'll leave it with this. If you were a Christian and you had a baby out of wedlock, would Jesus go with you to the Planned Parenthood? Or would Jesus say, trust me, I'll help you get through this. Trust me. Don't go and kill the baby. Trust me. I made the decision when, when my oldest son was, was, was a baby. I fought my, my son's mom on this decision, right? I mean, if you want to keep it 100, I fought her on this decision. I prayed in the, in, in, in the Planned Parenthood because she had pretty much made her decision up and didn't lie to me about it. But I was in the Planned Parenthood and I prayed about it. I prayed in the front lobby. I said, God, please don't let this go down. And then she ended up coming out and said she couldn't do it. Thank God. Thank God. I had to fight for that. I had to pray for that. But, but if Jesus was in the lobby, Jesus wouldn't tell you, go on and do that, girl. You know, you got a better life or you, you, your life is more valuable than that. Jesus would say, look, trust me. You don't know what's going to happen. And when I trusted God um, about, the, about the scenario, what happened was is that there are people who came out the woodworks to help me. There's opportunities that were provided for me, and look at us now. So um, Jesus would want you to trust that God will be able to take care of you. Um, Jesus wants you to make better decisions on the front end, and God will protect you on the back end. And then, and that's pretty much how it goes. So we're not having an argument about uh, should women be able to do No, this is not a constitutional issue. This is not absolute. You know, they still have to vote on it. You know, they, they, people, they, they may have a, dissented, a dissenting argument, and they may never rule this in, in the way in which we think they should. But anyway, there's a lot more to this. We could talk about it another time. I love you guys. I'll see you on the next video. I'm out.